Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, the mic's working and technology isn't failing me and you can hear me and you can see me okay. Uh, and I know there's a little bit of a lag, but just throw a comment in and let me know that all is good and well. Um, and I hope you, uh, thank you very much, JK. Good evening. Uh, yeah, hope everyone's good and safe and all that good stuff. Um, welcome to Learning with Line 6. Oh, Mr. Schilling in the house. Good evening, sir. Uh, learning with Line 6. So uh, we've been doing a bunch of streams um, the last year or so, and we've just started this new series. So we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some, uh, some pretty cool stuff, basically. Uh, and you get to start with me. I'll apologize straight away um, for potentially my dog making a load of noise. Uh, he's downstairs and he likes shouting at fresh air. So if you hear that, I'm not getting burgled or anything. It's my dog being a little bit daft. So today we're going to do something maybe a little bit different uh, than what we've normally done. I'm not going to play a note of guitar. I'm just going to talk at you. Sorry about that. But we're going to get into a feature of Helix uh, or part of Helix that I think is really cool. And I don't think we probably talk about it as much as we maybe should. And this is the command center. So kind of going back a little bit with Helix, um, you had some options, um, and I'll sort of show you through those, of how you can set things up and some of the th things you could do. So out of the box, uh, the pedal board is laid out with presets, and you can actually change that layout. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, Cool. So, when you get your Helix, it looks like that. So you've got some presets laid out, and you can just go between them, and everything's all peachy. And then you hit the mode button, uh, depending on what firmware you're on. Um, uh, on the latest one, it says preset and stomp. So you basically go between uh, preset mode and stomp box mode. Uh, and hitting that gets you anything that you've assigned to any of the switches, which is really cool. Now, we introduced a feature that uh, if you're new to Helix, you might not have discovered yet called Snapshots. Now, what Snapshots does is, uh, if you've seen the film Inception, um, it, a snapshot is a preset within a preset. Okay, So I can actually switch between presets, but the, there's a small kind of gap in sound, uh, and it is really small. But you don't get things like delay trails um, or reverb trails or anything like that. Snapshots solves that problem. Uh, so to get snapshots, you go to three lines, global settings, go to plus switches, and then change this to various different layouts, which is already cool. So we can go presets and then instant access, um, uh, presets on the bottom, instant access, or into snapshot mode. Okay, so I actually, this is actually how I have it set up. I have four snapshots on the bottom and then access to uh, four different pedals on the top. And that's really cool because how I've got this particular preset set up, I've got clean uh, with compressor, I've got clean without a compressor, kind of a crunch, and then a higher gain thing. With any of, uh, within any of those snapshots, I can just add anything I like to that particular sound. So tweak it on the fly. Also with snapshots, you can change uh, a, a ton of different parameters at the same time. So if you like uh, one particular amp set clean and that same amp set dirty, then you can do that too. So, um, so snapshots are really versatile and if you haven't experimented with them yet, please do. Now that's kind of nothing to do with command center. However, if we go in, what we go into the command center, you basically get all these layouts. So we've got lightning bolts on the top, and then we've got all the foot, switch lay, uh, foot switches laid out here, and uh, built in expression pedal and any external expression pedals. And I can do a ton of different things with these, and this is where it starts to get cool. I'll try and keep my eyes on the comments as well. I'm bending down um, and doing this really awkwardly. And we do have. I'm going to change the screen. 
There you go. That's much better than seeing the back of my head. Um, we've got Doc in the house. We've got Nick Bell in the house. So we've got some other product guys to help you out. Um, JK, we'd love to see more flexibility with the team's tap pan tempo function, either in the command center uh, to add its physical free text or select for it on a form of this. Um, yeah, the tap tempo thing. Ah, sorry. Sorry, look out for one. Um, I think you see it a little bit better now. Now I've got my back out of the way and uh, expanded it a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in slightly. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah, the tap tempo thing, it's kind of set as it is, and obviously you can go into the tuner, but what you may not have discovered um, is if you just tap it, then you get access to the BPM. So if you're using a click track or you're doing some recording, um, you can actually set a specific BPM, uh, which is uh, really handy. So Command Center. Um, what Command Center lets you do is get into a ton of different things. Um, and I was gonna save this one to last, but th this is my favorite part of Command Center. So what I can actually do, um, You've got one layout here, and that can be set up as, like I say, presets or all snapshots or, or whatever. Now, if I just set that to presets, as an example, and I go into Stompbox mode, what I can do, I can completely, uh, please gain uh, volume of voice. So I keep bending down Roberto, and I apologize, I'll try and speak louder. Um, what I can do with this now, at the moment, I've got it set up as separate stomp boxes, but I can completely change that layout to exactly how I want. So uh, with the other screen, that, like I say, I can have eight presets, I can have eight snapshots, I can have a mixture of presets and snapshots or whatever, but you're limited to the bottom row and the top row. Um, what I wanna do, I want five snapshots and a couple of uh, uh, instant access pedals and then the ability to go to a specific preset and then something else that's pretty cool. So, command center. Uh, the difference between the foot switches, by the way, and the lightning bolts here, um, the lightning bolts are uh, instant command. So basically that's like a preset recall. So you can set any one of those to do a specific thing. So when you go to a preset, uh, that's what it does. And that can be um, any of the other stuff I'll talk about in a bit. But for now, I want to go to the foot switches. So I want to completely program this how I want it laid out. So I'm going to go into the stomp box mode. I'm going to go to that foot switch, which is there. And I'm going to go through the commands. So I want to go to a check snapshot. And then I go over here. I want that to be snapshot one. Toggle across and do the same with this. I want that to be snapshot two, so on and so forth. So you can see how this is starting to take shape. Um, so I can do the rest of them and then have all of these instant access or whatever I want, basically. If I want that foot switch, which at the moment uh, on this particular preset is switching between amps. If I'm doing for cable method, for example, that's where I can go in and go to the external amp control. Um, so the TRS, uh, you go to your regular amp and uh, two functions can be switched on there. So an amp I use a lot, um, you can switch the channels and add a solo boost, but it could be tremolo on an older uh, Fender amp, for example, or volume boost or reverb or whatever functions that particular amp has, you can switch two of them. And you've got tip uh, and ring and tip and ring sleeve uh, to choose from. So you just select the right one, and that then uh, that switch does that external control. So basically, you can set all these foot switches up to be. Um, in fact, I want that foot switch to go to a specific preset. So I can do that as well. So I go to the presets. Wrong one. There we go. So now, 
I can actually go, I can hit that button um, and go to um, a specific preset and actually have a completely different layout. Now, I know for some people this is kind of like, eh, yeah, that's okay. Certainly for me and, and a bunch of people I've spoken to, there are certain kind of systems out there, particularly, um, let's go back, particularly like the kind of more professional touring guys, and you'll see a lot of guys using big rack systems and these MIDI switches and all that, and everything's all configurable. Um, some people love the tap dance of individual pedals and all that. Personally, I like to hit a button and go to a sound and have everything switch for me, which is where well, the snapshots are great, but I don't want to be limited to four or eight. Um, you know, if I've got eight, that's all the switches used, and if I want to turn something off within any of those uh, particular snapshots, I've got to hit the mode button, go into Stonebox mode and do it that way. That's why I really love this part of Command Center, because I can just go, right, okay, I know for this preset, I want access to these five, six, three sounds, whatever you program in, um, and I know that within each of those, for the solo sound, I might, on a particular night, want a gain boost, so I can kind of assign that to a particular uh, switch as well. And then I need to quickly go to another preset, so I can have that all programmed in, and I know for that preset, I want access to these sounds. So that particular feature, for me, is absolutely priceless, and it just really shows how versatile Helix can be when you kind of get into some of these menus. Uh, let me check comments. Um, uh, so, Roberto, hopefully you can hear me now. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder without losing my voice. Zach, it's also for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, camera technology from 1992. I'll be honest, Zach, it's it's more the light in here. Um, it's um, uh, yeah, it's starting to get a little bit dusky outside, and I don't have as many lights as I should do. So. Apologies for that. Um, uh, yeah, it is 1080, allegedly. But it is streaming as well, so, you know, quality and stuff. So, Trevor, does MIDI Command Center receive stop-start messages from external devices uh, and sync up with the looper blocks? This is something in the future we can look at. Um, that's a fantastic question. Um, the, the MIDI side, which I'll get onto in, in a minute, um, can send pretty much anything you want. Um, so if the Beat Buddy, for example, kind of receives MIDI messages, then you could program any of these switches to send a specific uh, MIDI CC, uh, MIDI toggle. Um, uh, I don't speak Spanish, unfortunately. I'm really, really sorry. I used to, but I forgot it, so I'm rubbish. Um, yeah, Trevor, the, the, the MIDI side of it, uh, Helix can absolutely receive uh, MIDI messages, so it's a case of unfortunately get the manual out. Um, uh, but the looper can you can trigger uh, stop, stop, um, you know, all that good stuff with MIDI CC messages, and there is a MIDI a specific MIDI CC number for that in buried in the manual. So crack out the manual, get those, and you should be able to send a MIDI signal from something to trigger Helix. Uh, I talked to a gentleman earlier that wants to automate uh, effects changes through Ableton. It's the same deal, basically. What you will have to do is have uh, that particular effect assigned to a foot switch, so Helix recognizes that particular thing. Uh, but it is explained in the manual. Uh, that's a very, very deep uh, subject, and we'll, we'll maybe cover that another day. Um, but let's talk about the MIDI thing for a minute. So, if I please, come out there. So I've just worked all that. Um, so the um, so the instant commands, um, like I said, it's it's as simple. If I go back to the camera. There we go. There we go. So yeah, like I said, these instant commands, you have all of the same, or access to all of the same things, basically. And anything you assign to that, when, uh, when you go to that particular preset, that is what it will trigger. So for example, like I said, if you're using this for app control and you want to switch channels, when you, 
excuse me, when you go to that specific preset, um, that's kind of, that's what you want to happen, then that's what will happen, basically. If that's to, if, uh, so in a MIDI command, then you can do that too. So if I want Helix to become a MIDI controller, and I mean a full-fledged MIDI controller, this is what I can do. So I can actually go to the blank preset, completely blank, and now I've got my Helix, I've got all these incredible amp um, models and cab models and effects models and all this fantastic stuff, but I just want to use my Helix floor as a MIDI controller um, and have all of those labeled. Uh, and this goes a little bit deeper actually as well. So back into pressing the wrong button. Command center, and I go to that foot switch, and I go to the MIDI, and you've got a bunch of different MIDI options as well. Um, so I can just send a straight CC message. Obviously, if you're kind of fairly new to the MIDI and, and you want to do this, uh, you want to make sure that you're on the same uh, MIDI channel. Uh, and then you select the CC number. Again, that's a case of get the manual out for whatever you want to control, find the CC value that you want, um, that's going to send CC number 38 to whatever um, thing I'm sending it to. And then I can do the same. But actually, I want to go to CC toggle. So an example of that is I've got maybe an external um, sort of rack mount reverb unit. And I just want to turn it on and off. Uh, so I'll find the CC number for that. And there we go. Do that, and that will actually be like more of a latching kind of deal. And for this, I actually want to send a, um, a note value, so I want to control a synth for a, a pad or torus bass pedals or something. You can go in there as well, select the note, select the velocity, um, you know, trigger a particular drum sample if you've got a drum machine. Um, so you can do all this great stuff, and it really is as, as simple as that. Um, for sequences, if that receives, um, if, you, if you're using a sequencer uh, or sampler and that will receive a MIDI CC, you can go, right, okay, that, there we go, and to start the sequencer at CC number 54, for example, I just hit that and that's going to start my sequencer. Happy days. That. Um, one really cool thing, uh, which th this is useful on a bunch of different levels. Uh, so along with all the MIDI stuff and the external amp and kind of uh, completely reconfiguring the, the board, um, a little while ago we introduced something called hotkeys. Um, now I know Eric, uh, Mr. Helix, was, was really excited about this. And it's only recently that I've kind of started using, uh, sort of seeing a massive benefit for this and talking to other people and some of the work I've been personally doing uh, uh, band-wise. So to give you an example, um, this can be used in a bunch of different ways, right? So hotkeys basically turns your helix into your keyboard, right? Now that might sound a little bit odd, why, why, why would I want it to do that? Well, here you go. So let's go back to my other preset. Oops. I'm gonna, it'll be worth it, there you go. So I've got a bunch of switches in there. Um, let's say I can lose uh, that. So I've got a I've got a spare uh, spare foot switch now. Now what I want to do, um, let's say uh, we're using click tracks um, for uh, for the band I'm currently playing in. We're using a bunch of different click tracks, um, and I need to trigger those remotely because I don't want to be messing around with an iPad or, uh, or or whatever. So I can go in. Come center. Go in, select that switch there, 
I go to my hotkeys, and I've got all of these to mess around with. So start on my clip track on the computer, and I'll have this rigged up uh, with, uh, through USB. It's a space bar. So that now, and I can actually, I can go into customize that and, uh, and rename it. That's my space bar. So when I press that, when I press that um, and it's hooked up to my computer, that space bar is going to start my click track. Um, and you can do that with pretty much anything. Going a bit deeper into that, so that's kind of an example of how you would maybe trigger something in a live environment with your feet. In a studio environment, you can kind of create multiple keystroke switches. So <clears throat> if you're recording at home, um, you can kind of basically, your Helix can be a complete control surface for your, uh, for your DAW. So you can uh, select a track, you can arm for record, you can start recording, you can stop recording, rewind, you can scrub, you do it. Basically any kind of shortcut key command you can program Helix to do for you. If you're practicing, uh, along with YouTube, you can kind of, uh, you can pause YouTube, you can slow it down. Basically, anything that you do on a computer keyboard, one of them, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually assign to a Helix foot switch, which is really cool. Like, really cool. So, multiple uses for, uh, for the hotkeys, um, from live implementation to just playing at home to recording. Really, really cool. Let's check comments. JK, could we be looking forward to new features or expanding the command center further in future updates? Most likely. Um, I don't know what we've got coming in future updates, but if you've got an idea and there's something you want to see, we've got the idea scale. Um, go on idea scale, put it in as an idea, and it'll get voted up. If it's a cool idea, we'll, we'll have a look at it. If we can do it, and enough people want it, then we'll do it. But idea scale for everyone watching, go and check that out. If you've got any ideas for anything, features, models, whatever you like, go and throw them on there, uh, and we'll uh, we'll always have a look for you. Anyone else? Any more? Cool. We seem up to date. So that's kind of a, a, a fairly swift run through of the command center features. So there's an absolute ton of stuff in there. And, and if you haven't kind of got, if, you're, if you've had your Helix for a while um, and you've kind of got all your sounds and everything, what the command center now offers you over and above some of the other stuff is just pretty much any layout that you want. So, um, so the actual usage of Helix becomes a little bit more interesting. So like I say, you might, on one preset, want certain switches accessible quickly. On another preset, you maybe just want one. Um, so you can do a hell of a lot with it as far as reconfiguring goes. That's where you're going to find all your hotkey stuff and all your MIDI commands, um, all your amp control, um, and Looper as well. Uh, something I didn't show you, which I know there's, there's got to be a ton of Looper fans in here. There we go. So, back to it. Blank preset. I throw a looper in there. Looper. Let's go with a six switch looper because six switches. Now, normally, you might want to assign that to that foot switch and then to get into the looper, particularly the six switch looper, you go in and then all you can all your controls. Now, if I'm doing a loop, I might want the undo. I don't want the play once, but I do want record. I do want stop and play, and I don't need full and rewind. So two seconds. There we go. So I'm gonna actually um I'm going to lose something out here. I'm going to lose that volume pedal. I'm going to add a looper. I'm going to add a six switch looper. Whoop, there we go. And 
do. There we go. Add that looper to that push hook. Now I've got a great sound and I want to do some looping. So I hit that, right, boom. Well, actually, no. I don't want that. I want instant access to some of those um, some specific functions on there. So I can go in, I'll press the right button, command center, go right, okay. I don't want to press that button and um, and get all the controls. I want that to be I've messed this up. Go away. Right, there we go. So I want to go to my looper, scroll through, find the looper stuff. <coughs> um, when I press that, I want to record. But actually, I want that foot switch to play and stop. There you go. So I've got instant access to the two features that I use most frequently on the looper, if I was good enough to do looping, which there are some awesome loopers out there. I'm not one of them. I haven't got a good enough time. Um, so yeah, like I said, with, with that kind of reconfigurable thing, you can really go, right, okay, here, I want this here and this here and this here, uh, along with all the MIDI stuff and all of the app switching and hotkeys and all that. So Go and have a look at uh, Command Center. Incidentally, that works with um, uh, Stomps as well, um, and HXFX, and obviously LT, and the control for the rack. So you can go in um, uh, Stomp XL, which I don't have to hand. Uh, something I like is I want four snapshots accessible, but I also want two instant access. So you can do that too uh, if you've got a Stomp XL. Um, yeah, stomp. You might want to switch between two snapshots and have one instant access. Um, you know, basically anything you want to do. Command Center is a really cool thing. I've talked enough. I've not played any guitar. Let's call it there. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, go and play with Command Center. Uh, come back next week. I believe we have the marvelous Nick Bell uh, doing some stuff for you. Uh, so this is now every Thursday, same time, same place. Thanks for watching. Uh, and we'll see you again. Cheers.